small story is of glory and disappearance. It begins in the classical period of the Mayan civilization here in southeastern Mexico over a thousand years ago. It begins here in the dense jungles of the Yucatan Peninsula. This is Uxmal. Hey everyone, this is Mac here with Stika Travel, and today I'm leading you on a tour through Uxmal here in the Yucatan Peninsula. So I had done a little research before visiting, but you can't trust everything you read on the internet, so I hired a guy to join me on my visit to Uxmal. This is Manny from Muna, a city about 15 kilometers north of Uxmal, where he grew up, so he knew a lot. My first question was, why Uxmal? Why did the Western Yucatecans, then controlled by a tribe named the Tutulxu, why did they move their capital from Mani, a town about 40 kilometers east of Uxmal, to this location? In this area, we don't have natural formations of water. No water on the surface, no lakes, no rivers, no lagoons. The only way to get even drinking water it's depending totally from the rainy season. Mm -hmm. the, the rounded trough that you see over there is one uh, system, but only the, the board is already restored. And Uxmal, as it was built more recently, had the technology and capacity to store water for all of its citizens. Our first stop was the temple, or Pyramid of the Magician. Standing over 40 meters high, that's more than 131 feet and only partly restored, the structure is awe-inspiring. I wanted to hear a little bit more about the style and the art, so let's let Manny tell us a bit about the features of this pyramid. The traditional touch of the hut, the, the cabana that you see, mm -hmm. uh, the, the little palapa that we call also in Spanish. As elements of decoration, you can see on the, on the facade or the middle, but completely the little door and the touch roof. All the all the, the, the oval shape that we see hmm, was completely covered with the smooth white stucco and a blue and red. Wow. We only see the limestone core today, but imagine the steep imposing temple whose inhabitants had never seen anything taller than a tree. Smooth and colored, brilliant red with flashes of blue and yellow, beautifully created by their civilization's most gifted artists. So of the pyramid, what is Chuk style? Is Puk, it the is Puk. it the rounded? Puk is the is the is the the, the upper building. Okay. The temple number five. Because this is the temple number one. Remember the hall that was on the other side? Mm -hmm. The temple number two, the temple number three. This is the temple number one the temple number four and the last one okay the five different levels that we come from. you may have heard manny mention the five layers and i wasn't really sure what he was talking about so when i asked him to clarify he told me that although Ushmal translates to three times built there were five different times when this pyramid was expanded and literally built right on top of the existing layer resulting in five different layers of the same pyramid with only the most recent being viewable Although there have been restorations, no replastering has been done on the Temple of the Magician. So, on our walk to the Nunnery's Quadrangle, Manny paused to show us what the plastering would have looked like on a small portion of a wall. Well, we see the, the, the restoration, you see? The little rocks, the mortar, this is the restoration. It was incredible how we, we see here the Temple of the Tortugas, the turtles. It's completely original, the wall. And the most beautiful architecture that we find here is the governor's palace. Which we will definitely get to later. But first, the nunnery's quadrangle, a giant public open space for the citizens of Uxmal. Stage for the dancers, for actors. Here. Imagine when all the buildings was completely colorful, 
different colors. This facade that we move, we move a little bit over here. The clouds, the drops of rain, the faces of chalk everywhere. The two headed snakes here. You see here the each each side you see the, the bodies and in each side you see the heads. Two headed snakes. Uh -huh. Another owl, another owl on the middle. Manuel, where are you taking us? Where where are you taking us? Well I'm going to show you the details of this beautiful decoration that we see here. A couple of snakes. Uh, the symbol, the symbolism of the fertility, the fertility, you see here, mm -hmm. the God, the human. Nothing else in there. Okay. Head, and you see the, the, the mouth is open and comes out a human head, giving birth. This is the real representation of Kukulkan. The tail, the tail, the rattles. And above the tail, you see another feature, the upside down. This is the representation of the of the corn plant mm -hmm. that comes out. The intricacy and the beauty of Ushmal was blowing me away. And I was confused why more people didn't know about it. Why was Chichen Itza the place to visit? Don't get me wrong, it's amazing. But Ushmal, wow. Many. Everyone knows about Chichen Itza. Mm -hmm. Not many people know about Ushmal. Why is that? The promotion. Promotion. <laughs> the promotion of, of Chichen Itza, uh, you know, the famous uh, shadow of the snake, Kukulkan, in the pyramid every equinox. We will tell you that here, we have a great uh, school of astronomy, according to the orientation of the buildings. Uh, the, the last week of, of March, let's say, the sunrise, when we get the, get, get the sun above the roof of this side, during one hour, it's lighted the main door of this building. And then, in the afternoon, the sunset, just lighting the other side. Wow. The nights, the nights that we have full moon. Mm -hmm. In one moment here, the sun, and the other side here, the full moon, uh -huh. and the morning star Venus. Wow. <laughs> the orientation of the building. It's that organization you were the talking about. Uh -huh, the, this great engineering architecture. The, the, the very top, the roof, the line of the roof of this building that we see down here, is exactly the line of the base of the upper building. Mm. When we see the distance in one more moment, looks one up. Amazing, the mathematics, the astronomy, the alignment. experiencing the nunnery's quadrangle, which got its name because it looked like the open space of a convent, we continued on towards the governor's palace and made our way through the ball court, which pales in comparison to the ball court of Chichen Itza, but Ushmal has many other things to offer. The tail, the rails of Kukulkan, still uh, the, the body here, uh, down here, but this part of the decoration of the castle. And one of those offerings is the governor's palace, El Palacio de Gobernador, that has some of the most intricate, most beautiful artwork ever done by any Mayan in the history of their civilization. But first, on our walk to the governor's palace, I had a few questions for Manny, because I really wanted to get a feel for what it was like to live here during its golden age, over a thousand years ago, here in Ushmal for a normal citizen. So Manny, if I was a resident of Ushmal mm -hmm. a thousand years ago, what would I be doing? What would it be like? Um, would it be like, would I be seeing people visiting and trading 
all the time? Would I? What would I be living in? Living in? Basically, as today, it was the 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 most fertile fertile soil. Even today, ten ten villages only here in the south of Yucatan produces the all the food, all the agriculture of all the the the, the Yucatan Peninsula. So I might because, be a farmer because, because the other side is completely rocky formation. Yeah. A run of Chichen Itza, that's possible, it's not possible to work agriculture here. Uh -huh. We have all the, the good, uh, very fertile soil. Okay. okay. So a lot of farmers and farmers, food production. Perfect, yeah, this is what, what the, the main, as, as today in my hometown, I mean, hometown is basically the, the people that depends on the, the corn fields. Number one, maize, corn. Mm -hmm. At the Nunnery Quadrangle, that mm -hmm. was a public space for everybody. Where was the market? Because of all this food. Be, was, it seems to be this area. Okay. Oh, we're in, okay. we're walking in the market area. Look, probably this. When you walk around this area, we find about 20 buildings. Four, four quadrangles. This is the characteristic that you observe here in Uxmal. Behind of this building, the, the facade, mm -hmm. the crestery, the windows, is the, the architecture. You, another great archite archae archaeological site that we have here in Campeche is uh, Becam, Becam Ashpujil. This is the architecture. Manuel, at the, at the market, did they sell and trade live animals for food and things like that? Yes, like yes, chickens yeah. and oh, yeah, yes. goats and... Goats, all yeah. the, the, the small armadillos, Armad <laughs> armadillos and, and, and jabalinas and all this kind of uh, fauna that we have. Uh -huh. the, cool. biggest, the biggest animal that you see is the white-tailed deer. Uh, white -tailed deer that is for us, too. for hunters, it's, it's, it's uh, as, as gold. It's gold. <laughs> oh, and look, another giant pyramid. This is so cool. 25 meters. And this is the pyramid of? Pyramid. Uh, the, temp the, the, the Great Pyramid is, is the traditional name because the foundation is bigger as the Temple of the Magician. Only the, the north side is already excavated and restored. It was in 1965, almost eight years they were working, about 50 persons. And finally, we reached the platform of the Governor's Palace. Good exercise for the chela. <laughs> for the chela. <laughs> but before the grand finale, Manny wanted to show me the ingenuity and the abilities that these Maya had over 1,500 years ago. Well, you see, totally original. And, no they're, more there, no and they fit together so fit together. well. And they, and they cut it with obsidian, pedernal, volcanic stones, no metal tools. The Maya had no metal. No metal, no metal. How incredible is this? No metal used at all, just stone and hard work. And from this raised area of the city, we were able to take in the immensity and the grandeur of this beautiful city of Uxmal. with some of the local wildlife. And on to the governor's palace, where some of the most beautiful artwork the Mayan had ever produced was on display. The governor's palace, the most beautiful building, the, the model of architecture in all the Mayan area. Uh, so, the first, uh, uh, drawings of Frederick Catterwood they got in 1840. Incredible, you see part of the facade uh, intact. <laughs> so around the year 1000, nine, 900s to be exact, just general time, all of these beautiful structures that the Mayan were building just stopped. 
the archaeological remains. They can't find m these kind of massive structures built anymore. And there's not really an understanding of why. There's many theories that researchers and archaeologists have. Um, some think it's because there was famine. Uh, some say it's because they had chopped down all the trees and they no longer had access to like fertile soil and that kind of thing. And this isn't unique to just Ushmal. This is the entire Yucatan Peninsula, the Mayan civilization, right? All of these places just stopped building around 1000. And I'm really excited to ask our tour guide to see what he thinks. So Manny, what happened? Tell me about the end of the Maya civilization. The collapse of all the, the, the culture mm -hmm. with the with the Cocomes and the Chihuahuas, Mani and so on. And then why af after why do you think that happened? The the wars. The wars. The wars. Because wars. because of the city state the st structure city of the Maya civilization. Since the influence of the Toltecs at uh -huh. Itza, started the military activities. The war and uh, the warriors and so and then the last get in mind that the people for from Chichen Itza was completely the Kokomes that finished. Now, like any civilization, there's not just one reason why it falls. I had done a little research and found that the infertile land and the overuse of soil was also another reason that may have led to famine and the starvation of many Maya. The, the land was getting, well, out. They have to, to move on different points to continue uh, farming and so. Uh-huh. Okay. If someone visited Merida, mm -hmm and they had the opportunity to come to Ushmal, would, how would you convince them to come here? What would you sell? What would you tell them? Well, now it's, it's canceled the sauna light show because it was the, the biggest attraction that we had here. Yeah. Uh, visitors uh, told us that after the, the one of Karnak in Egypt, and the, the greatest uh, uh, sauna light show here is Ushmal. Cool. Because the, you can, the spot, from the nonary quadrangle, uh -huh. you can you can enjoy all the 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 buildings even here, part of the facade of the governor's palace, the te temple of the tortugas, and the great pyramid, completely lighted. Cool. The pyramid and all the square of the nonary quadrangle. With our tour complete, and after appreciating Manny for sharing the history of his homeland, I asked him if it would be worth it to check out Mani, the older capital. He thought it was a great idea, so we made our way over. Now I know I've talked a lot about how the Maya, we don't really know that much about them because there aren't a lot of records. And people are wondering, is that just because they didn't write stuff down? Is that because it was lost in history and wrote it over the years? But actually, there's a bigger reason. Because on July 12th, 1562, right here in Mani, the old capital before Ushmal, there was a bishop named Diego de Landa. Diego de Landa was not pleased with the Maya. They were not following the Catholic rites, and they were not believing in the true God that he believed was here, is here, right? So he ordered an inquisition, all books, all idols to be destroyed and burned here in Mani. Five months later, in December of that same year, with possibly thousands of handmade books and religious idols, what is now known as the Auto de Fe of Mani took place cult images, religious icons and idols of the local Maya, and historical records of the Mayan civilization found in codices, the predecessor of our modern-day bound book, were burned on this very spot. So although we don't have all of those records that were burnt by Delanda and the church back in the 1500s, today we are lucky enough to be graced with new technology and deeper research that allows us to learn more and more about the Maya every day, every year. So although he burned all those books that day and smashed all those idols, we have a bright future ahead as more and more people take notice of the wonderful civilization of the Maya. 
And a special thanks to Hannah, my wonderful wife, for help with the filming. Madison, my dog, for joining us. Emiliano from Feo Feo Records for the awesome music. And especially Manny, the tour guide at Ushmal, who shared his life with us, his history, and with all of you. Hope you all enjoyed.